Everybody knows the story of Jonah, right? You know that? Some people call it a, uh, the story. We have um, Jonah, the prophet, and then we have the fish. The fish is interesting. Automatically, people go to the whale. The whale did it. <laughs> we don't know. We call it the big fish. That's, uh, if, and even me, uh, I, sometimes when I'm talking about Jonah, sometimes I say a whale. It's just, that's the way we were raised. But you know, the Bible doesn't say a whale. And that's, um, it's a possibility. Now, here's something that I bring up a lot whenever I talk about Jonah. is what you visually think of when you picture Jonah in the belly of a fish. Most people think well, right? But what do you picture? What's your first thought when you, when you think that? Do you think guts? And, yeah, you think that? I don't think most people do. There's a couple of us. Know, um, Shamu, that's funny. <laughs> um, m- I won't say most of us because that's probably putting too much emphasis on this. But a, a lot of us that grew up with the, uh, the cartoons of like Pinocchio. and um, Remember when it, it made the, the fire in the, in, the, in the stomach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he, walk, he was walking around, had all kinds of room. You know, we kind of think that's what Jonah was in. In this place that he could create a fire, he's all comfortable. But the truth is not. That's not it. Um, he was very uncomfortable in the midst of, ugh. And um, that's my term. Yeah, slime, that's good. Yeah, all right. So whenever we read these Bible stories that we were raised with, kind of block out or forget what you've thought about these stories and read them new. Read them like you've never read them before. Don't just take for granted um, that you heard it and you knew it. You know, you know these stories. No, you might not. You might have been visually thinking about it incorrectly. A lot of things in the Bible, we, we, do, the, we do it over and over because, for one, we have this impression from what's on TV. A lot of us, when you think of Noah's Ark, because of the cartoon um, figures that even in Sunday school, this isn't just like Disney and all those guys did. This is even in Sunday schools, we have the pictures of Noah's Ark with all these animals with their heads out. Well, what do you think that does to us years down the line? We think all these animals have their heads out windows? No, <laughs> there wasn't any windows except for the one, one door, one window. So you just got to think about that. And, and, and the reason you think about that is, is because there was a purpose for that. And once you study the ark um, and, and the significance of what that represents, then you start saying, oh, yeah, there can't be any more windows. There can't be any more. Um, because of the purpose that God used that ark to represent so much more. So that's a whole other study. We're not getting into that today. Um, but in the story of Jonah, we know, um, I, I say we know, I hope you know, if you've grown up in church, but if you, you haven't been in church, and you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. So it's in the book of Jonah in the Old Testament. So I'm not going to go through it. Just for the sake, I'm just going to summarize a lot to get to the point that I want to make today. So first of all, Jonah was a prophet, and God had told him to go to Nineveh to um, preach the good news, preach the gospel, preach, um, tell them about God, get, reach them. <laughs> Now I'm saying good news and gospel um, because that's in our terminology today. In the Old Testament, they didn't have the good news. They don't know about Jesus Christ yet. They don't know the gospel. That's the good news. But uh, just so we can understand it, that's why I say Jonah went to preach or to teach them um, and to prophesy to them that um, God's done with them if they don't repent. And that applies to us today. You know, God is giving us so much time, but there is time. There is a time when God's going to say, today's your day. You're done. Repent before you die. We don't understand that a lot. We don't want to hear that. I mean, that's a message we don't want to hear. We don't, we, we don't want to hear that God said our time is up. But the fact is, everyone that is born dies. And everyone that is born gets a chance to get it right with God. Repent of your sins call on his name but the truth is we all don't do that and eventually God just has to say okay that was your chance I remember specifically the girl that came here um, in the 
in the concert events that we have in the backyard there, that whole acre and a half or whatever we have back there. Um, we were doing that concert event, and, and she came there to bring um, her kids there to win bicycles. And she accepted Jesus Christ that day. I, I, I remember it, and I've told you guys this before. She's, she was praying with us. She accepted Christ. And then not long after that, um, and that's significant for you to know, not long after that, her husband killed her in front of her two children. And I just think about that all the time. I'm like, that was like her last call. She wasn't coming here to accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She was coming here because she knew that they were going to give away bicycles and toys for the kids. But when she came here and she heard the gospel, she gave her life to Jesus. And it's like Jesus was saying, your time's up. Get it right. And she did. And her daughters who witnessed her death by their father also witnessed her giving her life to Jesus Christ out here in that field behind the church. And they know where she's at. I talked to the, um, the grandfather of those children and he, even with the tragedy of what took place with the husband um, killing the wife, he said, but we know where she's at. And had it not been for that day at that moment, at that, in that place, she would have went to a totally different place. Isn't it amazing? One decision in your life changes your destination. If you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. But you got to call out. You got to believe. Jonah was told to go out to Nineveh and tell these people about God and that he was done with them. He's like he's giving them chance and chance and they're, they, they have nothing to do with God. They were evil. Jonah, now listen to this. Jonah, a man of God. I want you to know that. Focus on that. A man of God did not want to deliver the message to Nineveh because he didn't like those people. Huh? Jonah, a prophet of God? didn't want to deliver the good news, the message that God had given him to people because he don't like them. <laughs> He's afraid they're going to get saved. He's afraid that they're going to repent. He don't want them to. You know what? You will go to churches and you'll find pastors and you'll find Christians who make mistakes and make bad decisions. It doesn't mean that's the way God wants it. It just means that we're all human and we are all fighting inside with something because Satan tries to mislead all of us. Just because I'm up here doesn't mean I'm righteous and perfect. I'm righteous in the sight of God because God has forgiven me from my sins. But do I make mistakes? Absolutely. That's why we don't look at me. We look at God. You want to look at me? You say that that's a man that has sinned, but God loved him enough to forgive him and that's how you can look at me say if God will forgive him he'll forgive anybody <laughs> but the same way we look at other churches and other ministries I hear people all the time talking about oh that pastor did this that youth director did this like, you know they said a cuss word they, they, they were angry they were upset my wife always tells me you need to be more loving well I'm still human I can only do so much <laughs> so loving things just out there oh love people <laughs> I'm practicing <laughs> one day Rich I will love you yes <laughs> but it's that thing that we have in, in, in Jesus Christ that he says if you'll call out on him he'll forgive you um, if you believe in him that's where it counts. It's not just calling out on him. It's believing of who you're calling out to. But it doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. Jonah, a prophet of God, made mistakes. And he's going to pay for those mistakes. 
But it's a continual walk that we have. So let's say that there's something in your life that is just hindering you from growing in Christ. Understand this. We all have had that at least. <laughs> We've all had it at some point that something hinders our walk. But you must use God as your strength and your power to overcome whatever it is. You must call on the name of Jesus. Jonah decided he would run from God. And that's another choice you can make. You can attempt to run from God. You, and if the Bible actually says that he hid from God. Really? Yeah. It's like when the kids play hide and seek in here. It cracks me up. Before church happens, they play hide and seek. There's not many places to hide in here. And they all think they're hidden when they run as everybody has their eyes open and they run, run and they hide behind these altars here as if no one saw them. And then the person that had their eyes open the whole time and saw them, once they count to 10 or 15 or whatever they count to, it's the craziest thing. They actually pretend they're looking for them. And they look at all the, the rows of chairs. And they make their way forward as if it's a surprise that they're hidden behind here. I'm like, you saw them. You had your eyes open even before you started counting. You know where they went. But to keep the game interesting, <laughs> they, they do the little, where could they be? You know, you just picture that with God. Sometimes you just like, oh, let's play the game. Where are you? You're, you're hiding. Holy moly, you're on a boat <laughs> trying to get out of town. I would have never guessed. Jonah, what are you doing on that boat? And Jonah's probably on the boat going, no, nah, no, nah, I don't hear you. No, nope, you can't see me. I'm going to hide in the bottom of the boat, right? He's on this boat going to Tarshish. He's trying to run and hide from God. And then God's like, uh, wow, that was a good place to hide in the middle of the ocean where I control all that. <laughs> what a bummer. So the ocean starts to... <laughs> move a lot you know God's like here we'll just um yeah, we'll stir you up <laughs> the waves start getting bigger and bigger and everybody on the boat's going hey hey what's going on man and then all of that John is like it's all because of me you know one thing if, if it's ever you just don't call yourself out in the middle of the ocean and then you're the only ship in town yeah <laughs> it's like oh so what are they going to do? So they take the guy and they say, well, if it's all your fault and you've upset your God. <laughs> Woo. Talk about a revival going on on that ship. <laughs> They're all like, we believe. You know, that there was 99.9% .9 of the people on that ship were converted, I think, that day. <laughs> we believe. <laughs> In fact, we believe so much, we're going to get the sin out of our life. And they took Jonah and threw him off the ship and he's done. <laughs> He's in the ocean, and then sure enough, everything calms down. That's the way to get people converted. <laughs> then there comes that big fish. Some like to say, well, we don't know. Some say shark. I'm like, I don't know one shark that swallows without chewing. And um, I just can't imagine jo Jonah um, being eaten, swallowed by a shark without um, having any damage uh, done so I don't know what kind of fish it was but it was a big fish and I, I'm you know Loch Ness monster I don't know uh, but there's something out there that was um, big enough to swallow him and then he was in the belly of this fish um, and during this time um, he got right with God again I'm telling you if there is something hindering your relationship with God there is a price to pay, and this is the price that he's paying. I, I, people say, well, what if he would have died? Would he went to heaven? He was right with God. He just had a sin in him that needed to be dealt with. 
And that's your personal sins. You're going to work with those. Yes, you're going to work with that. But here's the deal. You're going to pay a price for the stuff that you do. He, he tried to hide from God. Hey, look at this. This ain't going to happen. Game's over. And then just to, as if being in the belly of a fish wasn't bad enough, you got to come out. I don't, I, I, and I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to pretend I'm at um, kids camp when I say this. Um, I don't know if you've ever hugged a toilet bowl in your life, <laughs> but that whole coming up thing's not fun. And sure enough, this fish threw him up and that had to be painful, <laughs> smelly. And I'm telling you, if there's any price to pay for disobeying God, that's not one that I ever want to do. So this, the, the, but your sins and the, pay, the penalty for sins is it's nasty, miserable, but you will learn your lesson if you'll just let God say, hey, look, that's wrong. Don't do it again. Jonah right away said, okay, God, I'm, I'm listening now. And he went to Nineveh and sure enough, he gave God's word to them. And amazing, the whole place repented. Leadership and all. They all repented. In fact, they fasted. They were so worried about what God was going to do. They all came clean. <laughs> Isn't that great? Here's this prophet sitting back and seeing a revival take place. And he was the most unhappy person on the planet. Yes, he had dealt with his sin of running and hiding from God, but he hasn't dealt with that sin in him that he is um, a hateful person towards people. He only wanted his people to be saved. And God was going to deal with him with that. Once everybody was right with God, he went out. He's going to take a break. <laughs> Jonah 4. Jonah 4, verse 5. Jonah went out from the city and sat east of it. There he made a shelter for himself and sat under it in a shade until he could see what would happen in the city. So the Lord God appointed a plant and it grew up over Jonah to be a shade over his head and deliver him from his discomfort. Jonah is so worn out from his work of going out and <laughs> spreading the gospel, the, God's word to the people. After a big day at work, he's tired, goes out to sit back and relax and realize all these people got saved. <laughs> they repented. While he's out there in the heat, God caused this plant to grow up over his head. Jonah loved it. Jonah thought this is the greatest thing ever. In just a matter of moments, this plant starts growing all around him. It's like, this is awesome. Jonah just loved this plant so much. It says he was extremely happy about the plant. But God appointed a worm. <laughs> when dawn came the next day and it attacked the plant and it withered. When the sun came up, God appointed a scorching east wind. And the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint. And begged with all his soul to die. Think death is better for me than life. You ever been there? <laughs> That's a life can take some weird twists. But there's points in our life that we get so depressed and so lonely and feel so useless, even in ministry, that we really cry out to God and say, God, death is better than life for me. I want to tell you that this isn't the only prophet 
throughout God's word that became depressed. There's several others, even John the Baptist, who saw Jesus and baptized Jesus. When he was thrown into prison, he sent messages to Jesus saying, are you really the one? Because I, I don't know. John the Baptist became depressed and not sure. We're all human. It goes back to we're all human. What in the world? When you're a Christian, stop thinking that you have to be perfect. Because that's where we get so depressed. We beat up on ourselves so much. Now, that's not an escape. I always have to throw this in because people say, Woo, I don't have to be perfect. I can do anything I want. No. Paul says, God forbid that. Just don't beat yourself down for things that you can work out with God. Don't keep continuing it and saying, this is okay, I can do it. God loves you. He hates the sin. Even if you keep doing it, he still hates that sin. Jonah was getting a lesson shown to him because of his sin. God created this plant to grow around him and create shade. Jonah loved the plant. God then sent a little worm in there to destroy the plant. And then because of that, he sent a scorching uh, hot east wind and then the sun scorching down on top of him and the two together was too much where he almost became faint. Jonah's then depressed. He's like, nothing that I have is worth anything. I, I don't like what just happened. And, and he's like, why did that happen? And then God says, look at this. The, you love that plant more than you love the people. It's a great illustration. And he goes, the way that you love that plant and you thought it was wonderful, even though you did nothing for that plant, it grew in one day and it died in the next day even though you had nothing to do with either. But yet you are here depressed because of all the things taking place and because of this plant. But I want you to see something. I love those 120,000 people that were in Nineveh more than you love that plant. And there is a sneaky little worm that is coming into the people's lives and destroying them. It's leading them away from me. Satan gets in to kill you, to take away, to destroy. Because I need people to know that they can trust me because I love them. So the work that Satan was doing amongst all those people is like the little worm that gets in there and takes from the plant and kills the plant. These people are all going to die in an instant. In a day, in a moment, they were all going to die. But God loved those people. So that I had to send you in there to give them the message because I knew they would repent. But they needed to hear it. They needed to make that choice. They were saved from the wrath because of their choice. Now think about that plant that you love so much and imagine how much more I love those people. That's why we did it. See, whenever Jonah realized that God had a love that was beyond comprehension, these evil, wicked people that were so wicked that Jonah the prophet I think it's safe to say he hated them. I think that's safe. But even with as much as he hated them, God loved them more. Even with their sinfulness. No matter what you've done, God loves you. No matter what you've done, he will forgive you. And even when you're forgiven, even like Jonah, you may still be struggling with some things. And God will get you through that.
What a promise from God. Stop going around and saying, oh, I have this one sin in my life that I keep dealing with, therefore I must not be a Christian. No, you're a Christian, you're a believer. Yes, you're going to face the issues with that sin. You're going to face some problems because of that. You may end up in a bunch of vomit. But you're going to learn your lesson. But are you a child of God? If you repented and you believe, even with your mistakes, it continue to have to be worked out. You're a child of God. If you truly believe and follow Jesus Christ. How do you know the difference? Well, if you're living in your sin and you continue living in your sin and you're good with it, you might want to check on yourself. But if there's a sin in your life and you know that it's a sin and you're struggling with it and you're fighting with it, then that shows that you and God are working on this. It shows that you see that there's something wrong and you want forgiveness and you want to go past that. And you may be every day, you may be one of those people that say, God, forgive me, I did it again. But it's because your heart knows that it's wrong that you continue to work it out with God. And eventually, maybe after you're in the puke, you've been vomited up like Jonah from the fish, maybe at that point you finally come to realize you know what? I can't hide from God any longer. I'm done with this running away. I'm done with this hiding. But at whatever point you come to getting it right, God can make you free from that sin. Start with repenting first. Repent first because <laughs> you know it's wrong. And then start on your exercise program with God. Start working daily to be cleaned of this um, sin that continues to grab you. You say, well, I, th I didn't think it was by works. No, you're not saved by works. But you do grow closer to God through works. The Bible says if you draw near to him. You hear that? If you draw near to God, what does that mean you got to do? There's some work involved. If you draw near to God, that means you are putting something into this, some kind of action. It's reading the Bible. It's praying. It, it's confessing your sins again when you mess up. It's being loving, kind. It's all of that. You know, you're drawing nearer to God. You want to know more about him. You want to get closer to him. And then it says something even greater. It says he will draw near to you. He's not going to stand there and say, all right, I'm standing right here and I'm not moving. No, he says, if you come to me, I'm coming to you. We're going to meet. He don't even say we're going to meet in the middle. He don't say that. He just says if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. And let me tell you something. He moves faster to you than you move to him. You make it a quarter of the way, he'll make it the rest. <laughs> Isn't it great? So we just say somewhere in the middle, God meets you. It's usually you move this far, he go, poof. <laughs> God loves you that much. Take it from Jonah. God's going to do a great work in your life. You may not be perfect yet. <laughs> in your heart, you're perfect. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and you believe in him, you're perfect in his eyes. You may still have some human stuff to work out, some fleshly things. God's working on you with that, right? Right? But let him go out and do the work that he's called you to do. Let him lead you. So in the hopes that, as in the case of Jonah, over 120,000 people repented. Maybe your friends or family are waiting on you to tell them about Jesus Christ.